heat now. You know how late Will is going to be? She said she had somebody, an appointment. So we'll probably get started. So I would say if she's not here, you can get started. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll uh, get this meeting started. And we will, for the Human Relations Commission, we'll start with a roll call. Here. Commissioner Fort Here. Commissioner Cato. Here. Commissioner Leanders. Commissioner Booker. Here. Commissioner Marco. Here. Youth on Board Peppers. Here. All right. And we'll have one coming in here in just a minute. But till then, we will request the confirmation that the Kansas Open Meeting Act required notice has been properly provided. Okay. With that, then we will abruptly move on to 2.1, the approval of the minutes. If we kind of have a motion. So move. Do I have a second? I'll second. And all uh, for approval, say aye. 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 All opposed? The minutes have been approved. Moving on, we'll go right into the new business. Uh, the Commissioner Housing Segregation Event Debrief. Hello. There you go. Okay. I just won't touch it. We had three of our commissioners attend, and they're all here, so I'm very excited to hear um, feedback. If you guys could each take a turn and just talk about the event and uh, in any which way, whether, you know, your experience at the event, if you guys have any feedback, if you guys heard anything else about it after you guys left. And since... Mr. Burchill, Commissioner Burchill's over here. We'll start with him. <laughs> um, my job was mostly to pass the microphone around. <laughs> and and uh, um, I, I really uh, felt it was, for me, it was more important to listen. And um, I, uh, as being a resident of Salina for, for so long, I was amazed that I could always still learn some new things about uh, Salina and its history, and I certainly did uh, uh, during that evening. Uh, my only regret is that uh, there wasn't more people present, because uh, I think there was some, I felt, very open, honest um, discussions that were I think would have been enlightening for anyone attending. I really did enjoy the, uh, the, the movie um, and, and I've watched it again. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> um, so I, I, mean, I was really impressed with that. Um, and the candor, I thought, was impressive. And uh, it, it truly, I felt, was a interesting and civil uh, dialogue with all those present. And I would just add, this was our housing segregation and the black experience event that we had a couple weeks ago where it was open discussion for the community and then there was also um, a documentary shown to, that was called Land of Opportunity that kind of talked about um, housing segregation specifically um, in Kansas City but it, it gave a, a kind of a brief 101 um, educational piece about it as well. So we'll go on to Commissioner Holt first. I too felt like it was it was a good dialogue. I. Uh, I think I was just getting into it when it was over. 
Oh. I would have liked to uh, have seen some of the seniors of Salina, other than myself, even more senior than me, um, there at the meeting. So that's pretty much it. Because I thought you guys advertised pretty good. I mean, it was out there. Mm -hmm. so. Commissioner Booker. I agree with both, um, and I thought it was very engaging and interactive, and I thought we had really, really good dialogue going, and I agree. I, I wish we had had a few more people there. Um, this is an event that I think was really great, and I'd love to see it again, you know, part two, um, just so we could continue the dialogue, because it was a learning experience for myself and probably for several others in there, and I, I just thought it was a great atmosphere. Um, it was conducive for learning, and it, it was just very interactive and engaging and thank you for that this was the year one right this is the first first one you've done so hopefully mm -hmm. then it'll build and build and build for the next one and we can get some more people involved mm -hmm. um, yeah I will say you know it was year one um, it was um, um, we were able to do it because of some HUD uh, partnership funds that we got um, so we partnered with the Salina Arts Center to, I think it was a really nice space too. I feel like that kind of made it flow better. Um, but um, it, it's, it was kind of a precursor to our, and we'll talk about it more, but we have a book discussion in April, Color of Law. Um, and just so you kind of know, um, you know, that just kind of gave this visual of uh, what the book talks about, which is really um, the history of housing segregation in our country um, and how, you know, a lot of things were strategic and, 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 and policy driven as far as segregation. Um, and I feel like it really hits home on um, some of the the things that we see in our society now as far as, um, you know, um, socioeconomic status and race and those disparities and how they align and we don't necessarily think that they they kind of go together but when you think about, um, you know, how some people were, um, you know, prevented from owning homes and, and others weren't and, you know, if you think about a home is like one of the biggest assets that you'll ever have. So if you bought a home in 1950 for $40,000 and then, you know, you um, sell it, you know, now for $400,000, that's huge, you know. So, um, and if people were deprived of that, their ability to own a home, then they're deprived of their ability to gain those assets. So um, it's just really interesting that the, that video and, and the book and uh, we hope to um, allow people that in information because a lot of people don't know the history of housing segregation um, and then that just takes a whole, you know, um, a whole portion, a whole chunk of history away from people and I feel like that information can really allow people to see things differently, maybe break down stereotypes and things like that. So it's just really cool and interesting and I hope, yeah, definitely that we do it again. Oh, I wish I wouldn't have been out of town for that because it sounds very interesting. It was. <laughs> I'll definitely have to catch the next one. <laughs> yeah, I have to say all the feedback we've gotten has has been on a positive note. The biggest thing was either they wish they would have been able to make it. Um, we didn't. Sometimes we feel like we check all calendars so that there's not a conflict. Uh, but um, we missed one calendar, and some of them, you know, some people had said that they had other, you know, other there were other activities going on, and so. Um, that was the biggest thing is that people just wish that either there would have been more people there or they wish they would have been able to make it. So I hope this is the, the start of uh, many more conversations that we can um, kind of facilitate in our community and, you know, keep on moving forward. So, and we love to see it when our commissioners come out and, and support. And yes, um, I do put you guys on the spot sometimes as they learned when they arrived. Uh, but I think it's great exposure for you guys and people to understand that, I mean, you guys are our, gover you know, our governing body as far as our office. And so I think it's great for people to get to know you guys and see who you guys are. So thank you for your support. Thank you. All right, if there's no more on that one, we'll move to the 3.2, the 2020 Fair Housing Seminar Briefing. It's coming up very soon. It is. It, we are in March, if you can believe that. I am still trying to um, grab
grasp my head around the fact that we're already in March. So the 27th, which is just a couple weeks away, uh, is the date for our fair housing seminar. We, I do have a um, sign-up sheet that's over here. So what I've done is I've put the, the different sections and times, and then I have put each commissioner's name. And if you've already said that you're available, I try to, what, according to my notes, I had three commissioners. Um, Commissioner Cadle has agreed to be our MC for the day. And so I've, I've put you, I've blacked you out for the whole day. All right. I took um, the day off just for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember uh, Commissioner Booker mentioned she could help out with one of the morning sessions. And then Commissioner Shelberg also mentioned she could help out in the morning. So if that has changed and or you were, would want to add any more times, if you could just write your name or say, yes, I can volunteer, or whatever you would like to add um, in the boxes under right under your name, just so I can get a feel for how many commissioners or how many volunteers we'll have throughout the day. We're also um, <coughs> looking to work with uh, the Realtor Association here in town. Hopefully um, they'll be providing also some volunteers so that we can fill in some of the gaps where we might need a little extra manpower throughout the day. It always helps. Mm -hmm. So we'll just kind of pass that through and get mm -hmm. everybody signed up mm -hmm. or signed off on it. But I am there all day okay. with you. And we have everything is it's very exciting we have as we as we get closer we have all the speakers have been confirmed and and they're ready to go uh, including our keynote speaker our panel um, has been provided with all the information they need and they're ready to come and speak at our panel we have you know the, as far as uh, it's just kind of the legwork that's left is name tags and things of that nature so if you guys want to come and help with that but that's we got that down so that's not necessarily something that we would need too much help with I was gonna say this is becoming pretty e easier each year for you it seems like as the flow of things it's just as long as everybody shows up I would say so. the to an extent, yes. <laughs> Getting things lined up, not so easy. Every but. year, I feel like there's something there's something new there. But it's an it's just learning experience. And I think this year, with the change ups we've done of the sessions and providing continuing education credits, yeah. uh, and um, we have a treat during lunch also. Ooh. That's something. Yes. Uh, so there's just a couple different things Surprise. here and there. <laughs> I like surprises. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Surprise entertainment. Yeah. Um, Wait a second. You didn't volunteer me for anything, did you? No, <laughs> we wouldn't do that. No, the person that they know, they know what's Sweet. Going. That's um, going to be fun. I would say that, um, unfortunately, we, we have very low registration right now. So mm. if you all could help us do a little promoting, we need people to come. This is so important. You know, we have... Um, you know, changed up and, and, you know, as far as the sessions and their breakout sessions, uh, we have specific information about emotional support animals, which is a big deal um, everywhere, especially here in town. Um, you know, we, we have, you know, our keynote speaker, Judge Jared Johnson, um, and, you know, that really cool housing panel. So I just, I really think it's a really good opportunity for people in town. You know, we're giving the social work, work credits. There are four credits, um, attorney credits, um, and the real estate credit. So that's a, um, a big selling point. Um, we're just hoping that we get more people because we really want as many people to take advantage of it as possible. So if you can kind of, you know, put a little bug in a few people's ears and just let them know that this is going to be a really um, awesome seminar um, and um, we would really appreciate if they would register. <laughs> Do we have any scholarships available? We don't. We don't. I, I tried several sources. Um, nobody really latched on to that. So um, maybe, you know, as we cultivate it more and expand more, we could, you know, we'll get more buy-in for that. But unfortunately, I did not get anyone to uh, that was willing to sponsor. I think we're definitely working towards, as we discuss, we're in discussions for 2020, you know, 2021, mm -hmm. getting... Um, that education out to the community that this is not just a 
landlord event or a real your realtor event that this is something that everyone from our community can benefit from I think we're both kind of ch challenged as come if you know if someone says well what about this person let me think about it and I'm pretty sure I can find a reason why that person you know would benefit from coming to this seminar so I think just changing that the mindset. the mindset of people thinking oh it's only for landlords I don't own a home or I don't I don't rent homes or you know I'm not in housing when housing touches everything you well, know yeah and a lot of people think housing is like public housing mm -hmm. or HUD you know well some people think HUD only does public housing <coughs> that's a whole nother story but um, you know I mean it touches everything it touches employment education you know I'd like to see USD 305 represented at our uh, seminar I'd like to see employers I'd like to see you know people that are um, you know in the business community and, and economic development all of that those I mean they they all you know in, are they're interconnected um, and so we've been trying to get that word out um, and like I said we, we don't have as many registrations as I would have hoped for especially offering those credits so I'm just hoping we get some more in the, the date the final date is the 13th I think so it's Friday but of course you know we're extending that because we just we, we really want as many people to take advantage as possible And for the, so if you did sign up uh, to volunteer, I will register you. You don't need to fill out, just to answer some questions I got, you don't need to fill out a registration form. I will register you and make sure you have, and you don't have to stay the whole day if you can't stay the whole day, but we would like to at least make sure that if you're a commissioner and you'll, you're going to be there, that you have a name tag and that just for people to be able to recognize uh, recognize our commissioners and I will make sure that all of that gets taken care of. Well, it sounds like we're pretty close to being ready other than getting people there. Is there a Facebook event for it or anything like that? Have you done social media wise for that? There or has just a post? been social media by way of the city okay. of the city page. Gotcha. So we specifically don't have a, a page to promote it. But I know the city has been, the city of Salina okay. has been promoting it. Okay. Mm. Anybody have anything else on the Fair Housing Seminar? What's like the time? Like, when is it going on? So registration is from 8.30 to 9. And then from 9 until we'll have different things going on, keynote speakers, different sessions until about 12, then we'll have 12 to one will be lunch, and then we'll go back into a session and a panel, and we'll wrap up around 3.30. Okay. I was just trying to think if there's any time that like high schoolers could come, because that's a thing that not a lot of high schoolers know about. Mm -hmm. So like, it would be a really cool opportunity if they could come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a thing for next year to think about. You could always um, talk to the principal or, vi or the vice principal, right. Ms. Falcon. I'm, yeah, I'm I sure put a bug I in could her get ear at one point. It, but, <laughs> like, I don't know if we could do, like, a group going. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I'm sure it's too late to play in that. Right. So I don't know. But I think that'd be a cool thing. Mm -hmm. Would be a good idea. Definitely something to look into for next year to see if we can do some. I, I, I hear what you're saying. Do you think of any teachers specifically that we could get in contact with for next year to maybe make it part of a uh, classes? Mr. Carlson does like a lot of law stuff, so maybe he'd. I'm, I mean, I'm sure he'd be into it personally, but I'm sure class-wise he could help with that or Dykus. Dykus. Hmm. Okay. Sorry to put you on the spot. I just. Thought. No, it's okay. I'm. <coughs> trying to think of who has classes that would or even any seniors that would be going into any of the fields that we're giving credit for um, things like that or Maybe the debate club debate yeah there you go oh, yeah. I have several clients that live in housing and they complain quite often about things that are going on. I think if it was like $10 that they would be able to mm -hmm. make, it, make it there. So I might be able to make that happen if it's $10. Okay. 
and to that end, we'd probably need to get more sponsors mm -hmm. to bring that price mm -hmm. level down, things like that. And that seems to have been the toughest part. Do we don't have any people it's an issue for that? I mean, has there been people that have applied but then couldn't come up with that? $40 there was, or? I will say we've had two, two I've had two calls uh, that uh, of of an individual and I, I'm smiling because it was a very um, a very colorful conversation that we had um, wanting to register and the moment you know I mentioned the 30 you know what the process and the $30 registration fee they just um, they did not agree with having to pay the, you know the $30 mm -hmm. and I try to explain you know we we've had efforts into getting sponsorships that's not something that we've been able to mm -hmm you know to get actually solidified for this year mm -hmm. you could possibly go out and speak to different agencies I know there's a couple people that have mentioned that they might they still might cause they've called and said is it too late and I said no well I might myself go out and talk to you know I work with caps or I work with Catholic charities maybe they would you know sponsor me and so uh, that's still kind of up in the air Unfortunately, at this time, it and what I tried to explain is we we don't make this is not uh, to make money for our office or anything like that. Even with the th we've kept it at thirty dollars for I think for the past two years. Even with that, we I mean we st that's just to try to help offset. With offset a little bit of the cost mm -hmm. so that we don't have to you know one of these years put it up to 67 you know seventy dollars we go um, to a lot of other conferences and it's we personally feel like ours is a it's very inexpensive compared yeah. to you know hundreds of dollars for mm -hmm. conferences like this um, and we just don't have the budget I wish we had the budget to say hey we can allow this many sponsorships we just don't we just don't what I will say though is what I expressed to you know the our concerned citizen that called was this this is kind of a one-stop shop you know we're going to be talking about it all day and but we are always in the office we'll not you know we try to be in the office as much as possible we're a phone call away you, we can provide education we can't provide legal advice but we can provide education free of cost calling us does not you know there's no charge if you want to come into the office and have a conversation with us about specific topics we're more than willing to talk to you and it happens all the time people come in and get this education so I understand you know this would be something great it's you know it's it's in a group and it's kind of the you know they get there's a, there's a lunch and there's a this and there's a that but the as far as the content and the information we can still provide that in our office without without them having to go you know to the the seminar but i know that uh we've definitely talked back and forth with evelyn to see how we're you know how can we make this more accessible because it's not the first time we hear people saying that 30 you know that 30 dollars does and i will say when we went from 20 to 30, I think you, I can see the difference between people's, you know, with, with people's attendance. And so, um, and, and it's as simple as, honestly, someone even told me it's as simple as, it's really easy for me to have a 20 in my pocket versus a 20 and a 10, you know, if, if I want to pay, you know, cash. Mm, yeah. And so it's just something as simple as that that you just don't, you know, think of. So, I mean, there's definite conversations to be had. Again, we're, like we said, we're already talking about things for 2021. So, I can I say that Independent Connection will sponsor 10 people? If you have 10 people that need their ticket paid for, we'll pay for those 10. There you so, go. Bravo. Uh, yeah. Definitely and up. I will reach out to some contacts and see if I can't get them to sponsor maybe 10. We'll just challenge each other. So we go. will do that. That but is awesome. That we'll could be the start people. of something beautiful right there. That sure could. Get the business challenge going on. I like it. Bravo. Yeah, yeah I really appreciate that. Awesome. 
just have them call us and we will uh, get that registration taken care of. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, there you go. There's a start. Oh yeah. Is there a PDF version of the flyer that could be emailed to me? Yes. Maybe I already have it, but if I don't. I mean, I've put the poster up in a few places, but if I could email, right now I'm thinking, oh, I could remind so-and-so. Right. So if I could do it digitally, that would be easier. I can than definitely, after the meeting, just send out another email with a copy of the flyer and the registration form. Awesome. Absolutely. I would like in on that email. Well. Okay, I'll just send just it to it everybody. Email blast. <laughs> Anybody else want to jump up and sponsor? That'd be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's totally all right. That is awesome. That is really cool. Now we just need, so if anybody's watching this on on uh, cable TV, <laughs> we need you to step up just like they have and help us out. Simple as that. Can we get it's a, a match? It's a community effort. It's a community effort. If you That's can match right. them, that'd be awesome. Everybody has to buy in the ha to fair housing. It is. I mean, it affects everybody just the same, so... You know, a lot of these people, it might be their employees it's affecting, you know, and so therefore if they can, you know, logically say that if their employees are, you know, well housed, then they're going to be able to come to work and they're going to work better and they're going to be happier. So, I mean, there's lots of ways to put it out there to the, to the different businesses. Mm -hmm. so. Well, if nobody else, let's jump in there. We will move on to section four, the unfinished or other business. 4.1, the case docket log update. So our docket log is, is <laughs> very busy this time. Um, as you can see, we'll start with employment. <coughs> if they're not highlighted, it means they're just still open. We're an investigation. We, you can see that we've closed three since the last time we met, February was a very busy month yes. for closures <laughs> and opening. Um, so we had one close with no NPC, which means no probable cause. That means that that case went to the commission and came back with no probable cause. So then at that point, the case is closed. We had one that was conciliated, which means that both parties were able to come and to come up with a settlement uh, that they both agreed to and were able to close the case in an am amicable way. Mm, amicable. There we go. <laughs> um, the third one that was closed employment, as you can see, that one is, is blue and yellow because it was closed and then it was, it was opened and then it was closed right away. Um, withdrawal without resolution and what that means is that they came in they opened we started the process intake and it all of that was completed and then they just decided that they did not want to move forward with the case and unfortunately that happens sometimes we try our best to provide them with as much education as possible and and, and not let them think that that for whatever reason that they want to close it that there's other options for them, but ultimately, if they request to get it closed, we have to fault. You know, we have to honor um, their wishes, and we do need to close the case. And then we did have another one open, which is just currently open. In housing, we closed four cases. One was MPC, meaning it did go to the commission and it came back no probable cause. One was closed without resolution, meaning that they opened and then they decided to withdraw with, without resolution. We had, and then we had two conciliations, so we had two closed that we were able to sit down and come up with a settlement for uh, that both parties agreed to. We also had two new housing cases that were opened just last week. And then we have our public accommodation case that is still open. I, I was wondering, has that one just been being investigated? Just It's taken a while to get 
get it through or because i know we've had that one up there for a while mm -hmm. so it's more of like a just trying to get with people and get everything going gotcha you guys have been busy 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 but it's good to see a lot of with some clothes, conciliations <laughs> that people yes. are coming together and working it out um it is sad to see so many of them opening you know with a lot of it could probably be prevented through education and mm -hmm. through things that you guys are already offering you know if they just people would take the time to learn it mm -hmm. so Yeah, how about the 4.2, the customer assistance log? We still, we kind of took that out and then brought it back again. We did. So we, I said I would have numbers for last year, and we ended up roughly around 804 for last year as far as phone calls, walk-ins, and interpretations and translations. And I would, I would say that that's definitely a little lower compared to because I'm sure there's many times when they just don't get logged, you know, they just don't get logged yeah. um, for the day. It's not have counters in your pocket and it's punching. No. There's so much going on it's that you just... <laughs> <laughs> so we do yeah. try our best to log as much as possible, but I do know sometimes I'll, I'll log and I'll say, oh, you know, I miss this person and this person, you know, that I that I wasn't logged for the day, so. But we definitely uh, stay busy, and like I said, <clears throat> people are always welcome to give us a phone call, you know, walk in. We would just ask if you do have le to call the office to leave a message if we don't answer. Otherwise, we don't know necessarily that you called, and so if you haven't left a message, there's no way for us to really call you back. Can you define interpretations and translations? What does that mean to you? That means when someone comes in that speaks Spanish mm -hmm. and they need assistance um, either interpreting, which means I go specifically with them to somewhere in the building to help them interpret. Mm -hmm. So it's not specific to our office. It's, it could be the water department, it could be the appraisers, office the it's city or the county the city or the county it's any time i have an interaction with somebody who requests me to assist them because they're, they're a spanish speaker because that's the only lang other language i speak so that's the only um, interpreting services i can provide or translations that's that's actually something we've tried to not do as much just because that's more time consuming and honestly, that hasn't really, in the last couple of months, that really hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. So is that a service that you are required to provide? Or is that in addition to the services that your department provides? Help me understand why you would travel around this building to provide a service. Um, leave that to my supervisor. <laughs> so, um, as far as I know, Julia is the um, interpreter for for um, for the the city, and okay. um, and does provide services to the county as well. So, if she's the interpreter for the city, and she works in the human, what I want to say it right? Community relations. Community relations. When you're out interpreting for the city, then actually Evelyn has one less staff person to do the work that you guys are doing. Um, yeah, I mm. think you can kind of say that. Multitasking. So sincere. do you get, does the department get reimbursed for that in some fashion? extra funds that would um, no I'm not sure. I, I believe that the way it's set up is if if and I, it's now I'm not the I happen to be the only one in this building mm -hmm. I believe that there are there may be a couple other bilingual employees that the city has uh -huh. I can't speak to how often you know I don't know their numbers or how often they you know help out I just know that 
because I am where I'm located um, and it's you know I'm just a step a couple steps away from the water department from the you know the appraiser's office things of that nature right but then that takes you from the department that I'm here for mm. right mm -hmm. okay I've, I've always kind of looked at that one as as like a part of the equality side of things you're, you're just kind of helping them to keep an equal foot um, so to speak, when they come in here by helping them to understand things or um, speak to another department or things like that. So I guess I've just always assumed that that was why it was kind of put onto this department was that it was just... Yeah, but that would seem to me like a whole additional <coughs> service that that department is providing. And oh, yet nice. they have all this other work going on. And then if you're traveling around within this building to provide that service, isn't that taxing on that office to answer those phone calls and to do the rest of that work? And I would say that is a community-wide problem for the Human Relations Commission and the department is that uh, Spanish-speaking citizens and Vietnamese-speaking citizens, and it's tough. There aren't enough interpreters, even for the Spanish-speaking population, which there's a, that probably is the largest. But to me, that's a problem that needs to be addressed citywide, is how do we deal with including everyone, regardless of the language that's spoken. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you mm -hmm. that it's it that Julia's job is to be part of the community relations department and I understand Commissioner Cadle's like but that's the that's the big picture big inclusive it, yeah. but it is for me a another issue for the city of Salina and and aware citizens to look at is how do we include people that don't speak English. Well, I know with my agency that I run, we would have to hire a person to come in and provide that translation. Where are they? Right. Are and they? there are a list of them, but they're not always available. But it just seems like it's additional, t <laughs> additional work that could potentially be um, done by someone else in some other fashion so that that department <laughs> truly has the time to do the work that they're in there to I, do. I, I completely agree with yeah. you. I just don't know where the somebody else's are. Right, I mean, right. I, I, my housemate is a Spanish-speaking person, and she's looking at this all the time, like, how do we do this? Right. How do we treat everybody equally, no matter what language they speak? Right, yeah. right. You know, I would just say I don't have statistics or numbers or anything like that for you guys. I just know that we do try to work together to make sure that all of our community is helped out when they, you know, when they come to yeah. our and offices. And I appreciate that. I do. Yeah. You do a lot of extra work <laughs> on top of all the work that you already do. So that's definitely appreciated. So. Um. Any other questions about this? No? No? I would definitely look into that, though, to see, you know, kind of like she yeah, said, maybe there's something to check more into. Yeah, that as one of our goals to, to uh, see what into. we can do about that? Yeah. Maybe if as one of the goals that we work on throughout the year to address that. to get that. more funding to your department or, you know, something like that, because at that point you would almost need another person in there to be able to flip back and forth so it's not falling on... Well, right Just now, it's kind of like they need another person in there anyway. Yeah, <laughs> true that. That we well, so. used to have another person, so yeah, that process is still in the in the working. So okay. hopefully, we will have someone at okay. some point. That's kind of what I was wondering if they took that position away or if no. you're just looking for a new we're one. Okay. Yeah, we're okay. hiring. Gotcha. All right, 4.3, upcoming outreach events and activities. We know about the fair housing. Anything else coming up? Yes, in April we have, <laughs> of course we have more for you guys. More stuff. In Is April we have, I, I, one of our commissioners, I think, came ready to, to, um, <laughs> Yes, it is. with I the color I'm reading of law book. For this. Yay. So that is happening April 23rd. We are having a book discussion. 
and last time I checked. Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. no, no. I was just gonna say that you can go to the library, mm -hmm. and uh, there was about forty copies that were available. I don't know how many are left to be checked out. Twenty nine, as far as on <laughs> Saturday. Okay. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> okay, great. I just know that we really t we just didn't want the lack of books available to be a barrier for people not being able to be part of this discussion yeah so we were able we had the HUD partnership funds that that's how we're doing these little events so we were able to buy those books so I was excited about that um, so yeah we got four, we had 40 books over there um, what were we gonna say Stephanie I'm sorry so will this discussion be at the library? at the library in the Prescott room I think it's six to eight mm. I believe it's six okay. to eight um, we'll send out a flyer and it's going to be posted on Facebook. I just talked to uh, Rachel, our um, public relations person. She's going to be putting it out there. So that, again, that video was kind of a precursor to this book, uh, which is, it's life changing. Well, it was life changing for me. I really, it's amazing. Um, I met the author and everything. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's a really, really good book. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be there for the book discussion. Oh. After planning, um, we were told that um, uh, I have to go to a, 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 a HUD retreat, you know, so, and it's in Chicago. So I, I really am upset about that because this is my baby. <laughs> We can record but, uh, your video yeah, uh, presentation. You have the same. You have the same idea as Lauren. So that was mm. Lauren's idea. So I'm gonna give with Rachel to see if I can do something. At least say something yeah, because sure. I Julia knows. Like I just. Oh my gosh. This book. is you this love is this my book baby. That much. So yeah. We can even Skype you in. I mean. <laughs> yeah, modern we were talking age. about that too. <laughs> I told her. We're I still will brainstorming. Do all of You're the not above out yet. From right. the moment. <laughs> I met, you know, <laughs> Evelyn. She has been talking about this book. At the interview. Um, I oh, wow. So I know it was, it really kind of, it crushed us both to know that she wasn't going to be there. I tried to get out of it, but I don't want to um, go to L.A. or North Carolina. So yeah. I'd, rather I'd rather go, go close to Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> so we will either have a video or have her on Skype. We will have some representation of Miss <laughs> Nelson at this event. We'll probably have a packed house that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Of course. Mm -hmm. Just some notes or something we can make sure to put in at the right times mm -hmm. on your behalf. Yeah, I got to brainstorm on this. We've been focusing on this housing seminar, but I got to figure out how we're going to do that because I have to have my input some kind of way. <laughs> so have you two done the blue hair skit again? Oh, no. No, <laughs> so we have not. So Stephanie's talking about <laughs> for a moment. I said, "What is she?" We did a presentation at um, Coronado. Coronado. <laughs> Coronado Elementary. Um, and sorry, we didn't even talk about that. But um, it. So we have a um, a kind of a, a skit thing that we do. We did it at Huesner. Um We called it the Sally presentation. And and you. So we did when we did it at Huesner, We did it. Um, it was like a drawing of a of a girl named Sally and you talk about Sally um, as a new she's a new student in the classroom and you and she looks really weird like on purpose like so I think Sally looked like a big whale with like orange hair and all this kind of different stuff um, and she had like blue skin or something um, so anyway like the goal is to like get the kids to talk about her like negatively um, and then um, you can chime in Julia because I might forget something but <laughs> So you get the kids to talk about her, and then um, you then get the kids to um, basically like apologize, and you start talking about it. it's an empathy presentation. So you get to talking about empathy, and like oh I'm sorry, every time they talk about her, you rip a piece of her off. Mm -hmm. So and then you know you get the kids to say sorry, they put the piece back together, and then the kind of the moral of the story is like even though she's put back together, she's still like broken because you know it's like rips and stuff like that. Um, so it's a really cool empathy presentation. So. So we went to Coronado and Stephanie recorded it. We should have brought the record. Oh no, we shouldn't because that's so embarrassing. <laughs> but <laughs> but anyway, so email it out if you want. So I, okay, we can. Yeah. Don't don't judge me. I said I went to law school me. to have purple 
skin and a blue wig. But anyway, I had on this blue wig. I had uh, pink skin and um, ran out and, and into the big crowd of kids. And, and we did that. We basically did Sally with me as the person. And her name was Pamphila, though we changed the name because we wanted the name to represent something, too, because it's like Pamphila. Like, who, what kind of name is that? But somebody's name is a part of them. Like, you know, even though it might not sound normal to you, it's normal because it's their name. It's a part of them. Like, we need to respect people's names. We need to respect people's skin colors, hair, everything, no matter what they look mm -hmm. like, you know, how tall they are, short, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm so, glad you got put back together. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so. We did. <coughs> so I made the pants, like, I cut holes in the pants, but I, it was like cloth underneath. And so this is kind of the cool twist on it. Like, like the cloth said like stupid or dumb you know and then when they ripped it off you could see the 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 le you know the the word mm -hmm. so i feel like there was you know we had to do some tweaks it was it was like our first run around run at that mm -hmm. um so i didn't have a microphone so the kids couldn't hear me probably but um you know some of them did you know they kind of got the idea we got a really cool thank you letter from the from mm -hmm. the counselor so we wanted to do that because we want to um eventually have a, a like a real professional costume and that was kind of like our first step at like you know, if you want to get a grant, you need to show that you did something. So, anyway, it was really fun, though. Stephanie, that sounds right. so interactive. <laughs> like it, it very sounds interesting. very interactive. The name, Pumfila. Is that? I think so. I, I like. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Um, I can. I came up with all sorts of wrong ways to say, um, Pumfila. So. Oh yeah. It was. Um, it was. I, I'm usually on the receiving end of people not being able to say my name, mm -hmm. so it was really interesting for me to purposely not say Pamphila's name um, the way that it's supposed to be said. Mm -hmm. But I think we just we really enjoy working with kids just in general, and so that just gave us an opportunity to continue that work. And I think it it really helped us have that visual because it's one thing for us to tell a kid, you know, words can hurt you, but it's a different thing when we can to some degree kind of show them how it, you know, the mm -hmm. moment they said, oh, her hair is ugly and that, that patch can ripped off. Well, now she's insecure. Now she thinks she's ugly. Now she has all these insecurities and no matter, even if we patch her back up, that doesn't mean that that insecurity goes away. It doesn't mean that she doesn't have duct those tape. feelings. Um, yes, I fixed everything with duct tape, you know, because in life sometimes we feel like we can fix the. So there was duct a lot of visuals, a lot of um, things that we tried to incorporate in our presentation just to give that, uh, you know, that added, you know, element to it. So we did have it recorded you know um <laughs> commissioner holt first was gracious enough to be there and, and record it for us and so we will send it out i guess i was always she already promised to send it out uh -huh. what i would ask you guys to do is <laughs> feedback if you guys yeah. could give us feedback how we can improve it what worked well what didn't work well yeah. don't no, judge me make this a national psa it will not leave the commission. <laughs> <laughs> For now, we'll keep this one what if Ellen between us. Involved? Can I can? I'm just the, I'm oh, just I love going Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> I I think it's amazing. I, love it. I think that is an amazing. Uh, you know, program, a w amazing way to get in front of the kids, amazing way to just teach, it was you know, awesome. uh, inclusivity and, and that everybody has their own, you know, selves and not to, not to judge people. That is awesome. If you ever need a substitute, Pomphilia. Oh, my uh, goodness. The, I mean, just being an amputee carries that with yeah. it, you know, because it's different. So, so, yeah. so anyway, let I me could, know. Cause oh, I could you cause have a whole new twice. conversation <laughs> with the kids. <laughs> a whole new conversation. Willow, you want to be comfy? <laughs> it's set now, Willow. <laughs> you're you're I'm, in. I'm, I'm in. I, that would be fun. <laughs> that would be fun. That's pretty cool. I, I've got done kindergarten classes when they do the letter P, so I talk about problems uh -huh. and prosthetics. And you know most mm. kids don't know what prosthetics yeah. is. So anyway, I've done that kind of thing with okay. the letter P, and so anyway. Oh, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Pump we'll Pump schedule Pump a Pump meeting after. Uh, yeah, Pompilia <laughs> has problems. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And prosthetics. What you say, Stephanie? You're next. <laughs>
<laughs> you, you, as long as you're recording, she's on the next, and then she's gonna go. And I'm we just gotta get a microphone. It. That's what we gotta get. But hopefully, right again, on. we'll have a real costume one day. Mm-hmm. We're gonna, we're gonna do this. <laughs> well, keep, keep it going, cause that's sound that from most of the things that that you guys do, mm-hmm. that is one of the, I think, the most important. Tell you mm-hmm. the truth, things out there is that pre education yes. you know when you're mm-hmm. when you're teaching kids at a young age they grow and that even society today shows that you know because if you'd have gone back like I said back in the 50s to now I mean there's a huge change and it wasn't because the people of the 50s changed their mind it's because those children grew I grew from the 80s to now and it's totally different thinking uh, on so many levels so many different things so the fact that you guys are in the schools that right there I mean, that's a perfect start, so keep that up. And the children were really engaged. Yeah, they really were the majority of them. They were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. any, any other events? Anybody have any questions about these events? All right. Uh, open up to public forum, but we don't have anybody here this evening. <laughs> She's having a lot of fun, though. <laughs> um, if no public forum, no other questions, I would move that we adjourn for the evening. Accept a motion. Accept a motion. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do it. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you so much.